Hello everybody, in this video we're going over how to install, set up, and configure virtualization in Windows 10 using VirtualBox. So let's do it. To begin, we're going to have to make sure we have virtualization enabled on our computer. And you can do that by right clicking your taskbar and hitting task manager. And by default it'll open up the processes tab, but you're going to want to head over to the performance tab and then click CPU. And then look down here for virtualization and see if it says enabled or disabled. If it says disabled, you're going to want to restart your computer, and when it first boots up again, you will see a list of keys in the bottom right of the screen, and one of those keys will be the key to enter your BIOS settings. Normally, it's either delete, escape, or any number of the F keys, or function keys. Now, each BIOS is a little bit different for each board, so in the description, I'll have a few links to articles that have general and specific motherboard directions for enabling virtualization. So once you do that and you get that all done, come back to this video and continue from here. So once you verify that everything's all good, we can go ahead and download VirtualBox. So now we can go ahead and close out of this and head over to our browser. Now, not only are we going to want to search for VirtualBox, which is where we're going to be hosting all of our machines, but we're going to want to download whichever type of distribution or OS that we want to run on our machines. So for me anyway, I'm going to be running Ubuntu, which is just a distribution of Linux. However, for you, you can run anything you want, and it's the exact same process as what you're seeing and what you're going to see. So for me, I'll be downloading the Ubuntu OS, but for you, it could be anything. So just keep that in mind. But we're going to want to head over to VirtualBox, and I will have the links to everything in the description so you can go right to them. And once you're here, you're going to want to go to Windows Hosts and click that, and it'll start downloading that. In the meantime, we can go ahead and download our ISO file. So Ubuntu 1804 ISO file. And we can go here, and just like that, download it right there. Now, I actually already have this downloaded, but I just wanted to do that for demonstration purposes. We can go ahead and open that up and we can close out of this so we can go ahead and continue with the installation we can click next here you can just choose your location i'm just going to keep it by default for me anyway go ahead and click next right here these are just some personal preferences you're going to want to keep register file associations checked however but all of these options right here you can check or uncheck as you wish but once you're done with that you can click next and then yes. Now I already have VirtualBox installed for me, so I'm just going to click no. Uh, but for you, you're gonna to wanna to click yes, and then after that, it'll install, and then you'll be ready to go. So I'm just gonna cancel out of that and click finish. And now once you have VirtualBox installed and you have your ISO file downloaded, which I have right here on my desktop, you are ready to create your first virtual machine. So now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and search up VirtualBox. We can go down here, just type in VirtualBox, and open that up. Now, once you have that open, it should look exactly similar to mine, except you won't have this Linux machine right here. This is my personal one. But once you are here, you're all ready to go, and we can go ahead and create a new machine. So you're going to want to click on New, and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it Ubuntu. And then I'm just going to keep it as the default directory, it's Linux, and it already selected my version. But there are many distributions that are, you know, recognized and registered by the program. But you can also do, you know, other Linux distributions that are not. But for me, I'm all good here, so I'm going to click Next. Here, you're just going to want to allocate however much RAM you want. For me, you know, I have a good bit of RAM, but I would say definitely keep it um, at least a third of your memory preferably less depending on what you're doing so I'm just gonna do eight gigabytes here um, but for you obviously do whatever you need so once you're good there you go ahead and click next here is asking us if we're going to want to make a hard disk so basically are we going to want to partition off a certain amount of storage from our you know storage device our m.2 drive SATA drive hard drive whatever it be um, it's basically asking us if we want to partition a certain amount of that disk towards this virtual machine. So for us, we're gonna to want to select yes on that. So we're gonna to wanna to create a virtual hard disk now. And then once you're good there, you're gonna to wanna to click create. 
So we're going to want to go with fixed size here and then click next. And I'm just going to locate the default of 10 gigabytes to it. You do whatever you need and you can also change the file location, but I'm going to keep that default for now. And then once you're done there, uh, you can go ahead and click create. It'll go ahead and make this won't take too long. And there you go. But we're not done yet. We're going to have to configure a few settings, but it's not too hard. So you're just going to want to head over to settings and here you're good in basics, but in advanced, and you're going to want to change both of these to bi-directional. What this is going to allow you to do is drag and drop, you know, files, things like that from the machine to your host machine, and also copy things from your machine to your host machine and vice versa. So you're going to want that depending on what you're doing. System, nothing here in motherboard. However, processor, you can allocate more cores to your machine. I'm just going to keep a default for now just for demonstration purposes, but whatever you're wanting to run, obviously allocate as much as you think you need. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it by default. And here, there's nothing to mess with. Display, keep that default. Storage, here is where you're going to want to select your ISO file. So you're going to want to click on empty and then click this little disk image right here and it'll open up a file explorer and you'll be able to select your ISO file wherever you downloaded it to. So you're going to want to click the icon and then choose a disk. So I have mine on my desktop, like I said. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the Ubuntu 1804, click open. And there we go. It just assigned that OS, that ISO file to this machine. So when we boot it up here in a minute, it will launch off of this file. So that basically means this file must always be on your computer. And if it changes location, then you're going to have to reselect that ISO file because it will lose the location of it. Um, so just keep that in mind. But once you have that, you're good there. Audio, you're good. You can just enable audio input if you want your microphone to work to your machine. However, by default, audio output is enabled. So, you know, audio on your machine will be outputted through your audio device. So do that as you wish. That's just personal preference. Network, you're good here. Serial ports, you're good here. And basically the rest is nothing you need to worry about. So you're pretty much good there. Go ahead and click OK. And now you should be all good to go. You can go ahead and click Start and let it run up. So it's asking me to select my startup disk. I'm going to want to do Ubuntu 18.04. That was just my other installation. So I'm going to go ahead and click start. And there we go. You can see it found the ISO file and it's reading it by this little purple screen here. So there you guys go. That's pretty much all there is to it. Once you're done with the machine and you want to close it, you can just go ahead and click the X and you have a number of options to do here. I normally just power off the machine and it'll abort it. And there you go. Now your virtual machine's off. If this video helped you, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys have a great day.